All right, here we are for another round. Gonna go ahead and keep. Um, no Haunted Amalgam shenanigans, but we do have... What? This is actually one of the worst decks where, like, Smuggler's Copter is one of the... Like, having two Smuggler's Copter is usually just not really doable in this deck. You do have Haunted Dead to help, but, like, having the creature to get the Haunted Dead out, and then, like, being able to get the Haunted Dead into play is just a lot easier said than done. So we're playing against Blue-White again, so we'll see if we can beat it once again. Last time my opponent had really bad draws, and it kind of made it look like a lot better matchup than it is. I think it's pretty close most of the time. See if he's got Copter or Spirit. I'm rooting for a Spirit. Looks like it's a Copter. That's fine. Play the Scrounger. Probably just going to loot the other Copter away. Sometimes, like, the second Copter is good because they'll stay sustained with the first one. Um, right now, if he's got Reflector Mage, I'm just kind of totally behind the 8-ball on my Copter. So I think the second one just seems really bad. I'm going to probably discard it. Drew Scrounger, which is kind of gross because... Interesting. If he Reflector Mages, I think I'm actually going to discard a Concoction. I don't think I have that on the play. Like, I don't think I can play that more than one Concoction without any Madness cards and really stay with enough cards in my hand. Um, And now, if he Reflector Mages the Scrap Heap Scounder, I can actually end of turn... Discard the other one. I don't... I think, I think this... I think this is bad. I think having the other copter could be nice. If he doesn't have a reflector mage this turn, like I have another scrounger to fuel the other copter, and it could be done. Really rooting against reflector mage here. But if he does, I do have the concoction to deal with the copter. Can discard scrounger, which the second scrounger doesn't do anything, assuming I can't cast it next turn. Putting it in my graveyard is fine. Hope to spike something we can uh, we can utilize. Looks like he's passing, which I kind of like. It means that he might have a stasis snare here. Which case he's probably gonna go after my copter. Which is fine, because then I'll just play the other one. If he just takes it, then I have the ability to like. If he just takes it, I have the ability to bait out a spell queller and kill it. Looks like he's got a stasis snare, which is fine. It's kind of what I expected. So I can go with both threats or just the copter. If I go with just the copter, I have mana up to deal with his copter. I'm kind of worried about him playing Gideon. So I think I'm just going to play both my threats. And I don't want to be in a scenario where he actually just has or draws a Reflector Mage and hits my Scrounger. Because then I just have two Scroungers in my hand for a turn, which is really bad. So I think getting it out there is reasonable. Probably shouldn't be F6, though, so I can maybe block his copter. But Gideon doesn't really scare me here. I can actually just kill it by discarding whatever I draw to the concoction and then grasping his copter. So I'm actually in a reasonable spot here. And I have if he doesn't have Gideon and I don't have to throw my resources away, I have pretty reasonable Avacyn protection. Like, I have the concoction in play and I have grasp in my hand. Um, I don't have any graveyard action going on right now. Looks like it is a Reflector Mage, sure. I think I might as well crew the Copter because that might take him off attacking. I'm almost certainly going to... Well, maybe I won't... Maybe I won't block if he attacks. It does get me to loot this Scrounger away for free, which I don't want. I suppose I can discard it to the Concoction as well. I want to be able to grasp this copter. Yeah, it looks like he's going to go for it. I think I will block, because that also lets me potentially... Well, then I just don't have... Then neither of us have a copter. I'm a little bit ahead on board, though, I think. Because I have, like, a better creature and the concoction. He's got a more stacked hand, though. He's got four cards to my two. It's going to be three on my turn. I'm going to block... I think trading is reasonable in this spot. It's a tiny bit of a punishment for not waiting, but it's fine. 
Um, I'm going to probably just main phase the Pariah and to play around... to play around a revolutionary rebuff. That just made things a little bit interesting. But I think I just go ahead and, and do this now. We, oh, we milled a Crypt Breaker, which is really nice because that gives us another creature in our bin for the Scrounger. And kind of weird to like main phase this Pariah like this, but I just don't want to hit a rebuff. If I hit a Reflector Mage, it's not really the end of the world. Like, that's not really a great turn for him to just Reflector Mage. On my turn, I can just uh, cast Haunted Dead or f bring my other Scrounger back and hold up Grasp. And I think that he probably only has one Reflector Mage because there was a spot in that game where it seemed pretty good for him to play one. And it's at the point in the game where he's a bit behind. He doesn't want to just keep, keep Reflector Maging. He probably wants to try to, like, remove the Voldaren Pariah or play an Avacyn or something. Like, if he's got Avis in here, it's got to be really tempting to just pass turn. And, because either what happens is either I don't, if I don't have a removal spell, either I attack into it, or he just doesn't have a removal spell. Or, sorry, or he just doesn't cast it end of turn and I don't attack. But I do have the removal spell. Let's see, he's got a Gideon, which is fine. That's actually, doesn't really do much. I'm probably just going to grasp it and move on my way. The problem with that is it leaves me a bit susceptible to an Avacyn, but next turn I'll have enough cards in play to just sack to the Pariah. I could actually morph the Pariah here if I just play the Haunted Dead, which is kind of interesting. But I think gr the Grasp is better. I'm not too worried about an Avacyn. I'm going to be wide enough where it doesn't matter. I guess I could return this instead. That plays around like a Declaration in Stone, but normally they don't have the main deck. So I am just going to run out the other Scrounger. And then I have the ability to return the other one at instant speed, which is just strictly better than Sorcery Speed. Because now, like, if he flashes a Navison or something, I can return the other Scrounger, sack three things, do everything I want to do. Um, if he doesn't have another Stasis Snare, though, like, it's going to be pretty tough for him to win this. I'm going to go ahead and run out Haunted Dead. Because if he's got an Avacyn, it kind of screws that play. If he's got a Spell Queller, he gets a Spell Queller this, but that's fine. I can just fire in with my other creatures. He hasn't played a Spell Queller yet. He hasn't really had an opportunity to have that kind of card. It's a Void Shatter. Wow, that is a huge blowout. But that's fine. I mean, I'm just attacking with the rest of my creatures. Not really worried about Navison or anything. Yeah, he's just going to five. Void Shatter is unexpected. Pretty strong card against me. It's gonna be really weird if he flashes an Avacyn next turn because I don't. I could go for the win. So Gisela, okay. He could have a Stasis Snare. Kind of a weird spot for me. You just draw Grasp of Darkness. Well, that helps a lot. Spellcrawler doesn't help him because I can just return the other Scrounger and win. Pretty good top deck, but. Any creature was a good top deck there. Like, I can just keep playing creatures, go wider. He can't attack with this or he dies on the reswing. Like, nine versus nine. And then I just. We play chicken. If he's got a stasis snare, I just never activate this, you know? If he's got three mana up. All right. So, playing against blue, white. A little bit more control y. I mean, he's got Void Shatter and Gisela in his, like, flex spots, which you don't normally see. But online, the mirror is so prevalent that it actually seems to make sense to me to, to do that kind of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and rebuff, rebuff, shrivel, shrivel, sovereign, sovereign, and where's my Gideon kill spell? Runus Path, what did we do last time? We boarded out one Sinister Concoction, we boarded out two Scrap Heap Scroungers, uh, two Liliana's, 
And then, I, did we bring out both Minerac Demons? I think we might have, but I think this is fine. When you brought out the Lilianas, the Minerax are a lot worse, so you have to be a little bit careful. And we're pointing out uh, Sinister Concoction as well. The reason I don't like Minerac is it's just so bad against Stasis, Stare, Smell, Spell Queller, and Reflector Mage. Uh, it does help me kind of like win the air and beat Gideon though. So I think one is fine. Oh, maybe I'll cut the just the win. And have the other mine rack in. I think I'm going to keep the just the win though. If he's got Gisela, I want more outs to that. Could also run the murder instead of the just the win. I am boarding in a lot of blue cards, so it's kind of taxing my blue lands a little bit. Yeah, let's try Murder. If he's got the Gisela package, I think that having another removal spell is reasonable. Uh, this hand is not good. Let's mull. Even if we draw a land, we don't have Crypt Breaker going on turn two. Ooh, I almost clicked Keep on accident. Mull again. Uh, this hand is a bit awkward. Do we ever not want Haunts dead in this spot? Let's bottom it. I need like a blue land. I just need lands in general. Not really liking my chances. That's the thing about this deck is you just have, especially when you side in cards like this, you really have some some awkward draws, some just inconsistent draws, which which, which uh, make me not like the deck as much. We'll be able to kill Copter. Hopefully he has. I'm actually not hoping that he has Copter, but him having Copter, we do have the answer to it, which is nice. I'm looking for blue land here, so I can stop a Gideon. If not, I'm just going to die to it, unfortunately. If you had nothing on turn two, I can't imagine there's anything you could have on turn three. Blue land, Grasp of Darkness. It's not the worst. See if he runs out of Spell Queller here, if he has it. No. Gideon is probably just game ending. Like, I can get the Haunted Dead and play at the cost of my entire hand. Which I probably have to do. Put the Gideon to one. Wow, this is not pretty. Maybe I can, maybe I'll mill like a Scrap Heap Scrounger. Did not mill the Scrap Heap Scrounger. Not that that would even help me, I guess, because I wouldn't have another creature until I discarded the Haunted Dead, but it would help me like push through, kill the Gideon next turn maybe. It's possible I should have actually kept the Spell Shrivel over Vodar and Pariah on the off chance I draw Sunken Runes here. Then I can just maybe be able to kill the Gideon over two turns. It's possible that I want more like to the Slaughter slash Ruinous Path just because this... He didn't do anything this game except play Torn for Gideon, and I'm still like kind of struggling to win. Showed him my counter spells too, which is really unfortunate. Don't really know exactly what we can draw. Maybe I should have mauled two five. Like two prize in the opener is just really, really, really weak. Declaration in stone. Mm. If I had another land, I could grasp it. He's probably going to have to be plus and Gideon here. Yeah, I was going to say... We could maybe steal a win if he like makes a knight and tries to play like a spell color to block and we have the grasp. But looks like that's not gonna be happening today. Ooh, Crypt Breaker's not bad. 
I mean, if his Gideon's not making two twos, and we can take over the game, our life total isn't that relevant. Hoping he doesn't have like a copter follow up or anything. Looks like he doesn't. Ooh, well, ghost copter's good. That'll get my pariah into play, uh, and help me stay not behind on cards, which is pretty nice. All right, I like my spot right now. I mean, I don't think I'm favored, but when I say I like my spot, I mean, I think that <laughs> compared to where I thought I was going to be this game, I'm much more ahead. Though, how my opponent, my opponent might actually have Revolutionary Rebuff. Like, he didn't do anything any turn. He played Gideon turn four. Then on his fifth turn, he played Declaration of Stone with two mana up. And it doesn't counter artifacts. So he can't, he wouldn't have actually been able to counter my Copter there if he had it. Just odd that he's had two mana up, like, every turn, especially on his turn 5, which would be a turn where, like, you would assume that he'd do something more powerful than just deck stone your 2-2 your that wasn't doing anything. So we need to actually think about the implications of him having Revolutionary Rebuff. Okay. He's attacking. Sure. If I can get the Gideon off the board, we kind of have the board right now, which is nice. Nothing? So, I can either make a 2-2. He might have rebuff. I could make a 2-2. And then crew with that. Um, if I try to make Pariah. I guess Pariah can protect me from Gideon, potentially. I guess I don't have to attack with Spirit. I could just attack with the Copter. I want to keep this Gideon on one, though. Yeah, let's go ahead and crew with Crypt Breaker. I think we're likely going to meet a Stasis Snare here, which is pretty sad. Uh, yeah, no, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I should have I should have crewed with Spirit, because if he's got Stasis Snare, he's going to do it before I attack. Hmm. So that's a pretty big mistake on my part. Because now I'm just kind of stuck. I mean, I can double grasp Gideon, I guess. Which is very unlikely to work. Especially because I think he might have a rebuff. I guess we'll see. Yeah, I'm supposed to just attack with Spirit. Or, sorry, do it the other way. Or make the 2 2 first. Um, even though I can't pitch the Pariah, like, based on how he's played the game, it seems so likely that he's got Stasis in there. I think we just go for it, which is kind of hilarious. <laughs> this is just not going to work, though. Maybe I shouldn't go for it. No, I'm going to go for it. It uses my mana. I'm so far behind. If I draw a land, I can go make a 2-2 play Pariah. So if he, like, uses his mana here, I get to get the Pariah into play, assuming I draw a land. He's going to Spell Queller the first one? Ooh, he didn't... He assumed that I didn't have two. That's interesting. So I guess now I get the luxury of, like... I think he was just thinking I was doing that to gain life. Now I actually get to kill this. And then just shrink the Gideon for four. I only go to eight. If I, I really want to draw land, actually. I think land is... like I guess land or ruin his path. Ruin his path might be better, but... Land would let me get my pariah into play. 
with three other creatures. Though, still have to go up against the five spells he has in his hand. He's been really crippled by his mana. Like, I feel as if if he hit his fifth or sixth land, like, we'd be in, he'd be in crushing me on my really wonky draw. Oh, I guess I haven't even considered. I could just attack the Gideon with my two creatures if I draw land and hard cast the Pariah. Would I rather have a 2-2 or the Gideon off the board? The Gideon off the board. We actually drew an island, which was pretty good. I forgot that the Gideon was just... Yeah, his Spellqueller play is actually kind of risky. Definitely wait for the second grasp. It would have just been a huge blowout, but... I guess I'll take what I can get. Cryptbreaker. You don't see Cryptbreaker getting in too often. Actually, uh, Kriberger attacked a, a, a decent amount at, at the Star City Classic, but it was always on the last turn when I was attacking for lethal. Ooh, that was not... I'm not sure if he was supposed to bounce that. I can just recast that on his upkeep. I could stay back to double block, but I actually want to get the zombies in play, and I don't want to lose bodies because they help me activate my pariah. So I'm just going to go ahead and play Spirit. I could upkeep the Pariah, but I'm going to not. If he attacks, I guess I'll try it. See what happens. Drawing the other Pariah is great, too, because he's probably going to be distracted. He's only got he's just so limited on mana. He's going to be distracted and probably have to go off one Pariah, and then I just have a second one. We might have actually pulled out of this game. I mean, if he attacks, is there a downside of going for it? I don't think so. Oh, 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 mistap, mistap, mistap. Assuming he's got the rebuff or stasis snare, both of them are really good for me. I want, like, if I wait, he might, I don't know, I, I feel as if, I want to force him to stay in the Pariah. I just have another one. I don't really care about this Pariah. Because we're getting a free 2-2 out of the deal as well, which gets us closer to, like, Zombie Delirium. Am I just eating? If I'm just eating this, it's pretty insane. It might mean he has a Fumigate, which is kind of an issue. It might also mean he's got, like, a Deck Stone. Poor Town Tapped. A Gisela. That is surprisingly annoying. Oh, remember, remember when I decided to play the murder solely because my opponent had Gisela's in his deck? I think I'm actually going to attack with a Crypt Breaker. Another 2-2 puts me at z drawing a card next turn. But I actually think the prize is better than drawing a card at this point in the game. Because it gives me a free 2-2 anyway off the discard next turn. But yeah, the upside of me just being able to eat Reflector Mage if he missed it, which I feel like, I mean, he's made some pretty suboptimal plays, unfortunately, so like, it leads me to, it's kind of weird magic when you assume your opponent makes a mistake, because you can get really burned, but like I said, in that spot, I don't, I think of anything, I kind of want him to just go for it. Let's see if he hits the Pariah or the Crypt Breaker. Hits the Pariah, alright. That is fine by me, that's kind of what I expected to happen last turn. Maybe he just figured that the Gisela was better on board and that I might sack my team to kill it. Then he can just stasis snare the Valdaren Pride to get my whole team. Which actually isn't unreasonable. Like, if I didn't draw the murder, I might have just sacked my team. I'm, like, so low, I can only take two hits from the Gisela, and the life gain for him is huge. Just gonna wait till EOT. He could draw. He actually has Void Shatter in his deck. I'm actually gonna do this again. Just do this on my main phase. 
Do I even care about Void Shatter? No, I don't care about Void Shatter. He's just dying to what I have in play. So I just pass. Be a little tricky with it. Better against like a Reflector Mage, I guess. I think he actually might just not be able to win this game at this point. I'm barring like a few Mega... He could... If he's got Void Shatter, it's not even that bad for me here. He's at 9. I just drew a Haunted Dead. So I can attack for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It actually is lethal. So yeah, we just jam. I think we just swing with the team here. We actually end up in like a weird amount of trouble if he like plays Spell Queller. Because I don't really want to play around Immolating Glare. But if he's just got Avacyn, he's just dead. Which is probably what he has. Another pretty easy win against Blue White. This game looked so bad for me, but he was stuck on lands and made like one or two like bad plays, which happens a lot when you play zombies. It's pretty hard to play against zombies. Like I had a few spots where my opponent, it was like a catch-22 where it was like a damned if you do, damned if you don't moment where my opponent made like what looked like a really bad play, but they were in a spot where they almost just had to like try to make me mess up or have me not have it. Alrighty.